Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Great Southern Billiard Tour Carolina Open. We're here at Fast Eddie's in Goldsboro, North Carolina. This is first round action with Chris Vomar and Larry Neville. Chris has to go to nine, and he's rated an A. And Larry being a pro, he's a triple A. He has to go to 13. Uh, match here is, like I said, first round. This is a the Carolina Open. They'll call this the Great Southern Billiard Tour Championships from time to time. But the official name is the Carolina Open. I'm J.R. Calvert with Inside Pool Magazine. Joining me here in the booth, none other than Alvin Nelson. Alvin, welcome. Oh, thanks a lot. Let's get me uh, adjusted here. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us out there. It's been a long ride here. And, uh, man, what a great place. I love Fast Eddie's. And this is always so much fun doing Shannon and Marge's Great Southern Billiard Tour. And, of course, always uh, having fun uh, with you too, JR. So thanks for uh, having me here, and let's get this kicked off. It's my pleasure. We're uh, having a lot of fun here. Chris seems to have won the lag, yes, and he he's going to show his break to Larry here. Watch that five ball. Right, right in the hole. One, one. ball. Mm -hmm. Two's nice. going to go for a cross-side bank maybe. Uh, it did stop in time. Chris he played this event last year and did fairly well. It's uh, see how much his game's changed. I can tell by that break he's getting better. He, well, he's been really geared up for this match. He knew last night after the draw that he was going to be getting Larry Neville on the TV table in the first round. So, you know, he's had almost 12 hours to pre prepare for this, maybe four, 15. I think he knew uh, right around 9 o'clock after everything was all the draw and everything was taken care of. So to him, this is, he's going to use Larry as a yardstick to see how much better his game is. Nice. And look at this, he's played this shot perfectly. Sure has, he's going to bounce right off the rail, drop down on the lower left hand quadrant of the center of the table for the six, right? Ooh, that's what I think he's going to do. That's what I do, use the rail. Beauty. Perfect. Right where he needs to be. Break and run. Yeah, this is one of Chris's favorites events too. I've been talking to him. He, he loves this. Carolina Open. He wouldn't miss this for the world. Nice break and run there. Put Chris up one to nothing. And he's really looking more right now at he, he, he wants to play perfect pool. He doesn't care about the score. He's going to look at the score maybe at the end if he does this right. Ah, these guys are going to keep score with pennies and let us see how they go, we can see Chris is going to go on to the left and Larry's still in the center. And this is an alternate break format, folks. Rack your own. Wow, Larry jammed actually, up. <laughs> actually hit those too hard. He did, he hit them too hard. <laughs> well, 28 would have been all right, Larry, but, uh, you know, I know you want to do 40. <laughs> Guy looks like Larry Never, Mike Mike Fuller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sitting he does. in his chair. Every time I look over, I go, oh, it's Larry. I thought he was wearing a black shirt. Oh, I think uh, Chris is not going to like this shot. I think he's going to see a whole bunch of seven ball here. Missed it. Even a champion like Larry is going to miss that shot every now and then. Mm -hmm. I think Chris is going to stuff him right up in behind the eight here. Bank is in front of the two. So a smart shot there, Chris Volmar. Yeah, I can already tell Larry's not playing up to his full speed. He's a uh, yeah, see that scratch, right? He's got other. He's got a lot of stuff on his mind, uh, and that's where I believe in the 
mental aspect of the game being so powerful, you know, sometimes. Sometimes. You things going on with your people that are ill and your family or whatever. It's in your mind in the sure. background. So. Well, I think what we're seeing with Larry is he's just getting started. Uh, Larry has a gear that's uh, a little bit higher than Chris's right now, and Chris knows that. Mm -hmm. And Larry had to give him four games. Now it's like he has to give him five. Now Chris made a little error there. I think, I think he not only made a position error, I think he made a mental error. Why not shoot the three in the same pocket? Why would he do this? He's just trying to show his ball-making capabilities, and I think he's going to have to get lucky to not leave Larry a shot. I think Larry will bend this. He bends these balls as well as anybody. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice shot. Yeah, Larry is definitely one of the most talented pool players on the planet. For anybody that doesn't know. Well, he's got hands like stone. And those powerful hands snap that cue forward. Wow. And he literally has to, to come up with ways to hit the ball soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a downfall when you're hitting them too hard, too. I call this the, pre, the first couple games jitters, you know. People don't play up to their ability until the match really starts going. They understand the table a little bit better. Well, normally a seasoned pro gets this a little bit better, but what it is... Uh, Technically, is you feel anxious, but it's adrenaline going through your veins. You know that you're going to have a match. So you get your adrenaline flowing, and your hands are shaking, and your mind is racing. Every muscle of your body has more strength than it did 10 minutes ago, and you got to adjust. Well, pros, they, they kind of know how that works. And in the end, you know, that's, that's really what we're seeing. And now... They adjust, just like any other uh, drug, uh, any type of chemical. Your body will adjust to it. And we're going to see Larry hit this jump shot here, folks. But, yeah, after a period of time, your body adjusts to the adrenaline rush. And meaning like a well, half hour or so, you should be fine. But pros, they come out, they're less oh, intimidated. Yeah. They're less, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's an, just another match to them, too. It's, right. it's not such a big deal. And, you know, in Chris's situation, he may make a few bad shots just because he's trying that yardstick theory on Larry and trying to see how good he is. I think Larry getting a few shots like this, and it's going to be all over for Chris. Yeah, once he gets in the roll, uh, they, like you were talking about, the pros know how to go into that zone. Mm -hmm. They know how to, it's, and it's all routine, and it's all, in my opinion, just the training of the routine. The routine beats every, supersedes to all in pool, I think. Sure it does. <laughs> Hope everybody out on the chat's enjoying the the stream and everyone on you uh, you stream and inside pool TV. No, we are broadcasting it in HD, 720p. We know that uh, several of you folks cannot uh, your browsers can't support 1080p. Uh, for those people that want to see this in 1080p later, you may do so at our YouTube channel. It's it, youtube.com forward slash inside pool mag. And subscribe. subscribe to that and we'll, we'll come right out and tell you when we have new videos for you to watch. It's all automatic. It's done by YouTube. And it'll just appear on the homepage when you log in. YouTube will suggest them to, I, to you as I think how that works. Nice. When you show up. You'll see some pool tables and things like that. For anybody there that, that's uh, enjoying the chat, you might want to invite a few people to come on in to this morning, this afternoon. And you can do so by hitting the share button at the bottom of the Ustream player. It'll bring up a choice of Facebook, Twitter, some other social networking sites, and you can just click on those. And YouTube, Ustream does the rest of them. 
the rest of the work for you. You just basically have to click it, click another button, and you're inviting your friends to come on over and chat with you and hang out and watch the shows. Nice thing about it, your video player doesn't stop playing, so it won't even harm, harm anything at all. So let's see uh, as Chris Volmar kicks off game three. What are you saying, Alvin? Break and run out. Five ball? One ball and the five. Five ball. Two, go two goes up table. Two. Jumped that he hit him too hard. Too excited. He was actually jumping up very quickly is what I saw. Yeah, and it looked abnormal. It's like he was standing up to see how the break was going to work. You know, and that, uh, that generally doesn't mean good results. And pop the cue ball off. Now, see this walk, folks? When Larry Neville just starts to stroll, you're in trouble. And, yes, he's past that little adrenaline rush, and he's settling in. Trouble right here, folks. Let's see if you can draw it back to the rail and get out for the four. That's why he has one of the best strokes in the world, folks. Right there. Some people can't hit that ball that soft and draw it and get that action. Hit that ball really nice. Sure did. See, Larry Neville is, uh, he, he, he actually has won a tournament in the last few months. He picked up his win down at Capone's in Florida. Yes, he did. And he made the cover of Inside Pool Magazine. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but it did. <laughs> Great right, shot. Great Let's shot. Larry can get on a roll. Well, this alternate break is uh, kind of a nice thing. At this point here, you have Larry. Even if he was to break and run every rack, he has to let Chris have shots. And that's why that weight in this format is tough for these players. You want to guarantee somebody shots and you're giving them alternate break, not only does it stall you, but it, you know, pumps up the other player that gets to keep playing. Definitely an interesting format. Larry is up. Two to one. all about the break took a little bit off of him and still didn't help for those of you just tuning in we're here at Fast Eddie's in Goldsboro North Carolina this is the Carolina Open the jewel in the Great Southern Billiard Tour series of events throughout the year this is it this is uh, the tournament I've been waiting for all <laughs> year, JR. I love this tournament. Oh, the people down here are nice. Oh, you can't beat the Carolinas. That's, there's some really nice players in here, too, in the room, in the, in the tournament. I think everybody here is a good guy. You know, there's, you know, a lot of good players. They like to play a little, you know, good pool. And not having uh, like Johnny Archer or Nick Varner here, you know, definitely I was a little disappointed. But uh, still, we're just going to see a whole different set of people moving through this tournament. That's good. That shot that he just did was very tricky because that nine, when you try and swing the cue ball up table, that nine can go down onto the bottom rail. You try and just keep it there. In, Sometimes it doesn't happen. You can't hit that stroke. You're only an inch away from it. He's going to have a bank shot here. Now, I predict that he might try and use this nine ball. I mean, he's an inch shaded the other way to bank this shot, but I think he has to bank down towards the nine. He hit it straight in a hole that he had a 1% a advantage on uh, natural angle towards. That was about it.
Well, Chris, this has fallen into your area right now. This is what you'd like to see. Nothing more than a 9-9 victory. The reason I say that is if it was 9-6, he would think something was wrong with Larry's game. If he, unless he played it absolutely stellar. And if he gets beat, you know, 12-9, well, then it's a hollow victory. I think he wants to trade games with Larry at this point. Definitely got to keep up with him, that's for sure. I might suggest getting a lead if it's possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, once he starts getting ahead, it's better keep up. Yeah, made the four and a one. The two is not going to be in a good position for him. Yeah. No, that's the four down there. There's the two. Look at this. He's, he's okay. He's, he's right on the three. Nice. <laughs> I think he got a little bit fortunate. I'm just saying. Definitely. Because <laughs> I think if he put the cue ball in the center of the table, the best he'd have here would be a, a nick on the three for a safety. I'm not quite sure he wanted to do that. Long draw shot. We'll cross over the bank. I don't think the bank's there. If he tries to follow this ball, which might be, you know, an easier stroke to perform at times, I think he's going to get a whole lot of eight in the game and end up in the middle. You see how he jumped up on that shot? He, did. he yeah, wanted to did. see that ball go in the hole. Yep. He should have had a commit to a, a, a level more level shot there. Meaning, watch it go in while you're still down on the shot. Right. Larry milked it up a little bit himself there right before he released. Well, both players are struggling with uh, the leaves and the shots that they're performing. Oh, it is 12.30. I mean, pool player time, that's really early. This is like an 8 a.m. match. Well, coming up right after this match, folks, we're going to have Shannon Dalton himself versus Younger Chapman. A couple of great players here. we got Ron Park, who just finished runner-up at the U.S. Amateur Championship down in Stroker's Billiards in Palm Harbor, Florida last week. Great event. Yes, it was. Lost to er er Ernesto Bayawa. Great player that guy is. Can you nick this? It's a great shot here. He got it all the way back out in front of the eight. Nice. That's touch. Well, let's examine Chris's shots. It looks like he could try and nick this four, but I doubt that's his shot. But I do see going past it and spinning back and trying to catch the four either full in the face or just nicking it. He hit it full in the face, but didn't keep the cue behind the eight. And that's how you wanted to perform that shot. As good as you can try it, right there. Yep, Ware's gonna just drop down to the rail and nice, great shot. Do you like getting above this six ball or going back two rails, or do you like going I like shooting the it six in the same inside? Pocket. Okay, that's what I like too. I don't go as far. There you go, mm -hmm. perfect. Slide straight over for the seven. Shoot the eight in the side if you can. Larry's uh, going to have to run this one a little long. He'll take it far into this corner, I think. I don't think he's going to flop and shoot the nine in the other corner, but, well, what do I know? The only thing I think Larry was thinking there is he doesn't want to play with the side pocket. 
part of the pocket. Take a second here to hit you guys with one of our commercials. Alright, we're back. Man, he split the rack, made the corner ball. One get a good little kick, sure did. <laughs> well, this looks how they how you spread them out when you're hitting practice strokes. <laughs> That's it. I don't think he's gonna do too much with his cue, he's just gonna try and stall it towards the center of the table. Stalled it pretty nice. Not quite sure who the gentleman playing Mike Fuller is. I've seen him around, but I don't know his name. That score to me looks like uh, four to nothing. So, yeah, I believe that's in favor of Mike Fuller at this point. But... We will try and get some brackets online for you folks here very shortly. Uh, we'll get uh, Marge, our tournament director, co-promoter here on the Great Southern Billiard Tour, and see if she's capable of uh, giving us the brackets, and we'll post them up there for you. I think they had 70 players, 68 players. Larry hit this shot perfect. He couldn't have placed that better with his hand. Great shot. He only wanted to be a hair off the rail so he could do this. I think we're going to see this is a fairly easy shot for Larry, routine. Looks like he's even going to draw this ball a little bit. Sure did. Nice. Nice little punch stroke. Uh-oh. Yeah. Getting bad now. Once Larry starts waking up. Well, Chris is getting his chance to uh, shoot every other rack for sure. So let's see where that takes us. Six ball, one ball. Two's going up table. Nope, stay down. Six table. one. Deuce is going to go and hang, Perfect. and that five is going to be the uh, last ball last rolling. Last ball rolling. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Should be okay. I think he's fine. I think he has, but to make sure he does not hit this ball with high cue, so that he can let the spin grab go in between the three and the four, go up table, and maybe even shoot the three in the side. Good stroke. Good stroke. See how that grabbed real well? Beauty. That's what happens when you don't hit above center. You are you can actually get a little bit more side spin, and it's the ratio of top to side is much different. It'll really grab. He should slide over about five inches. Just beat the seven ball here. I wouldn't try to do anything funny like that. Oh, he's going to get a first mm. cut. Not the worst in the world. He's okay. Yeah, he can probably just roll one. He can roll three if he wants. So. The eight might start getting tricky. Well, he's looking at the eight now, and I'm I'm sorry, but he should have looked at the eight when he was shooting the two. 
because he wasn't supposed to touch any of these balls. And if he did, he should have known right right away. Okay, he's going to play it in the left-hand side pocket. Or he could move the cue ball to about where it's at right now if he really wanted to. I think it goes in the side. It goes in the side. I think it goes in the in the lower right hand corner. Mm -hmm. yep. He says he wants it in the side. The nice thing about this is after he makes the good hit on the eight, his cue runs into the nine and kind of corrals it towards the corner. Mm -hmm. So he can actually hit this with a little stop shot, and he should be just fine. Well, I disagree with that. And again, if this eight ball didn't go, if that was the reason that he did that, he should have known that from ball one. Trying to figure it out after you're committed. Definitely want to thank the staff at uh, Fast Eddie's, uh, Bucky, Eddie, Pate. Again? Didn't we just do that eight times? <laughs> Eddie's stopped by the booth to say hello. Take our picture. The omnipresent Eddie. The Fast Eddie. All right, here we go, Larry. He makes that six ball. Doesn't crush him. Split the wicket and look at this. One. He's going to get a Ooh, shot. Wow. It's got a shot. How do Man. you like it? I think we're going to see. How lucky was that? Yeah, Chris is over here. Just, he can't believe it. He's like, wow. Chris is like, I won the first game and it looked really promising. And yeah. then what this happened? Uh, oh, he got lucky. There's no doubt about it. He got lucky here. May be able to get this ball. He may. He just might. I don't think so. I think the four is in the way. Just having it close is lucky. You know, you're going to put that in the guy's mind. You never know. Either. This ball can still be makeable, and if it's close, some guys will just freak out and miss. Mm -hmm. Surprise, Larry missed that shot, that, that opening shot. Breaking them well. Yeah, he tried the old thin it rail first, see if he could run up behind the seven there. That that didn't uh, really get the job done. As a matter of fact, I think this is a much easier rack than what Larry had to get started. So somehow that exchange worked out in Larry's favor, folks. That's why he's a pro. Well, I think Larry's going to put it on cruise control at this point. <laughs> the only thing he has to worry about is he's going to zigzag from the three to the four to miss the five and take the five out of the game. And he'll have a down table angle on this four ball. So they run two rails at the five, keeping an angle on it. One, uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, if you're Larry Neville, a simple little draw stroke is still simple. Definitely. Most of us are trying to use the angles here. Larry's just going to draw the ball out and say, yeah, whatever. Take a second to thank our friends over at Kamui Tips for offering the subscription special with Inside Pool. In honor of this event, 
the first 50 people that either buy a one year at $19.99, which is the regular discounted price on our website, or they buy the two year, which is only going to be $27.99. It's a savings of $9. Kamui's going to give everybody a voucher for one of their tips to be installed by an authorized dealer. That's a $20 value. So if you buy the two year, you're getting about $30 worth of value, or $60 worth of value. For less than thirty, twenty-seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. So thanks to Kamui. Take a second here and uh, thank one of our other sponsors. I'm John Hendrick, pool player and owner of the Green Room in Pineville, North Carolina. My serious players demand quality, and that's why I switched to Millican Super Pro. This cloth plays at the perfect speed. It lasts a long time and the spill guard protection saves my tables from stains. It saves me money, and my customers love it. Millican Super Pro, exclusively from Sterling Gaming. Millican's got me covered. How about you? Great break. Everything decided to stick together on that one. this I, I'm not quite sure that the one is gonna go he's shooting it like it does it was that close folks it really was well that moves the two into perfect position for Larry a little bit of draw stroke get out on top of the two and I literally think that he can use that big draw stroke that he has, get a cut shot on this ball, and draw back off the four into the nine and go back up table for the three. I think he's looking at something different, a little safety. Come back up into the eight. Put this right into the two, real soft. El perfecto. Make Chris break him out with a break shot. A kick shot, I mean. Probably smart as they get right there. Sam Monday watching the hit. Great hit. And a pretty good safety play, too. Perfect. I really don't think Chris can see this ball, and I'll actually be surprised if he makes this ball. There's very little for him to find a way to make this ball. He's going to take him, actually, if you look at it, I think they're going to have Sammy call this one as well. He's going to have to hit off the point with a lot of draw left. Low cue it so that the spin really grabs. See if he gets it. He sure got it. And Sammy let on that that was a good hit. And that's how crazy that shot was. Looks like he's okay for the six. He'll probably pay, play the seven in the bottom right hand corner pocket. Oh, well, he's on the four, so things are going to get a little tough on that. Oh, there it is. I see. <laughs> I'm colorblind today. <laughs> yeah, he's stuck there behind the seven. Okay. Ooh. Oh, he almost got back and uh, gave it a little nudge. Larry's just going to come right off the bottom rail, get above the rack a foot or two. Well, he wants to shoot it in the side. Probably a better shot.
pretty easy little out there. And Larry is going to extend his lead. 7 to 2. 7 to Chris 2. Moore. Made the eight, the five. Q's gonna go by. Oh, it got a little bit of a nudge from the deuce, but I think this is a playable lie. Six, seven are a little messed up. touch. Have a lot of our folks at home that put these onto their big screen TVs. What a great shot. I think Larry can play the combination. I think he can play the bank. I think if he wants to do this, if he's getting right there, I think he's going to play the combination. He wants to get across. I sincerely do not think that Larry is going to play this breakout because part of the hits on the six actually scratch. I think that was absolutely atrocious. That was poorly thought out. Um, if he's going to do the bank, he almost would go above the side pocket. And the combination is on. And I'm not sure about this bank. Wow, he put it backwards. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's where he played it. You saw him uh, coming over and measuring it up. But that I think the one rail bank's still easier. Yeah, that was a really uh, impressive shot there, Larry. Preparation wow. versus perspiration right there. Mm -hmm. He went for perspiration. Well, he likes to do uh, a lot of fancy footwork. Nice. Ooh. Caught that point. Caught that point, buddy. Eight to two. Chris is starting to fall apart here. Come, the wheels are coming off. I think he's trying to overamp that break, and he's trying to create opportunities there. And I, that is a certain strategy, but I think the first thing he needs to really do is make sure that he doesn't give Larry all of his opportunities in return.
Gonna be okay. Nice shot. You know, Larry's quietly going about his uh, game here, and it seems like he's just picking up some of his his games and picking up some of Chris's, and that's what's going on here. He's not doing anything spectacular. He's just not making very many mistakes that cost him games. Take it. Nine two. We're gonna take a short commercial break here, folks. Forty years of Q craftsmanship. A state-of-the-art production facility. Revolutionary design. When you step to the table, unleash the fury. fury. Precision craftsmanship. A player's cue ready for action. A cue with a sweet hit. A consistent hit. See the entire line of Fury cues and unleash your fury. decided to push out and I, at this point here he's he's playing with Chris he knows that he's odds on favor to have Chris make another mistake at this point Chris is not composing himself the way he'd like he may look to be composed on the outside but his sticks creating uh, some rather erratic results right now And that's a shot that Chris would like to take another crack at. And that's what Larry was banking on. Larry seeing a little jump shot here or is he kicking at this ball? Not sure. I'm not sure what he's doing. I don't think there's a nine kick ball here on the kick. I think he's uh, really being optimistic. Got to swing at it. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> well, I stand corrected, folks. Jeez. I knew that it was close, but I didn't think that he was going to be able to cut it that far. I thought he was going to hit the bottom row with the nine. See if Chris is going to shoot this off the five or straight in. Okay. And the wheels are coming off, folks. Chris is not hitting any strokes the way he'd like. Yep. Larry's in his mind now. Larry's Larry's got there. Yep. If if you're Larry Neville, you're thinking well. Now he's looking at making the nine again here. He's probably going to go off the deuce, yep. slide it, and go right towards the nine. Look at him, folks. He's even saying, what happens if I make it in the side, you know, or in the corner? Where yeah, am I going to leave just, the cue? He's just toying, playing around now because he knows he can try whatever he wants. And Chris is going to have a real hard time getting back in alternating break. 
He's going to try and bank his two. You just saw the, the line zigzag it below the seven and bring the cue to the bottom rail. If he misses that, he has a chance, chance to make the nine. Hmm. Look at this. Wow. He didn't want to hit it that clean. Well, he left it hanging. Yeah. Well, and what a... And this is good for Chris because Chris can immediately get get started and comfortable. He doesn't have to take a long shot all the way across the table. Chris is going to take a little break, try to get himself together here. Just saw him take a deep breath too. He was getting some oxygen in the lungs. Yeah, he's that that happens when you tense up in your chair and you don't use good posture. You suddenly have yourself a situation where, you know, you're depriving your brain and your muscles of oxygen. And it, that tension causes you to play poorly. Remember seeing pictures of Wimpy in his chair looking disgusted. Just relaxed, though. A relaxed, disgusted. Gotcha. And, you know, I said, that's... That's the way it is, and I'm sure it was a you know the possible shark move, of course. <laughs> but he looked like nothing could possibly befall him. Chris came by the booth. Chris will be stepping in with us on the booth. We'll tell him how bad we uh, you know shellacked him during this set. <laughs> now he's going to go back and watch these, and uh, maybe maybe pick up a couple of few pointers. Playing great pool, but. Not necessarily right now. And see if he can get his his game turned around. Oh, well, Larry's just dominating him. It's not he's, he's missing a couple shots, but Larry's just opening, you know, that that lion roar right at him. Oh yeah. But oh Chris, Chris, Chris. He can't believe it himself. And this will happen when you try to use somebody as a yardstick. Wow. You try and say, look, I'm going to measure myself against him. And what happens is you're putting the pressure on yourself. You're saying, I want my final exam right now, sir. That's what you're saying. <laughs> I have, have had people play against me like that. And I knew that they were trying to gauge their own game. And instead of gauging their own game what they saw was they played so poorly that they couldn't even figure out why they played so poorly so they could you know they they ruined it there was no purpose in what had happened how did he use larry as a yardstick i'm not following what you're saying he's trying to say let me see how i measure up to larry neville and that's going to tell me how good of a player i am and that's what he's doing he's telling you how good he's playing he's all ready for this match and then suddenly he goes Larry measures the here, where do I come in gotcha. the world of pool? Gotcha. And that's how he's using Larry as a yardstick. I see. Kind of an important lesson. I think it's already going to create an eight game deficit. And this is why getting out and getting seasoned is so valuable. Chris is an IT professional by day mm -hmm. and plays a lot of tournaments, but it's tough when you play the great players because they're all over the place. Well, first they're off, everywhere. they know the tricks to keep somebody that mm -hmm. from playing well on them. You know, chances are. And then at the same time, they know that, you know, they play well. They, the chances are they play better. So you could even have a lead, and it's not anything to these guys. So it gets really tough uh, to try and, you know, in a Chris Vollmer situation to, you know, play a couple of matches a week where a pro might play 20 matches in a week. Oh, sure. And it's nothing to them. The right. adrenaline's rolling. They don't care. They're fine. They're, they're just relaxed. And in the end... They've practiced to not make mistakes. There's so many tricks to learn during competition that just being a good player 
doesn't necessarily make mean that you're going to win, the, you know, a tournament. That's why. Yeah, he's not making his wing ball. And Stood up a little bit on that one again, yeah. but he hit it a lot square. He's def deflating. That's what I call that. Larry will do that to you. <laughs> Nothing like, uh, you know, a, a little lesson of humility and watch a guy soft stroke a ball and have it go four rails with draw. Oh, he's the best player in the tournament, in my opinion. Besides with, Shannon. With, along with Shannon, yeah. But as far I'm saying Larry's been on the tour all year, grinding, grinding, grinding. Well, Shannon's just amazingly talented and can pick up a cue after not playing for the whole year and, and jam. Well, you know, and the other side of it, you could look at it this just to kind of give you, you know, a, a reference to how good Larry is to back up your statement is Larry's won major tournament this week or this year, mm -hmm. just recently, a couple of months ago. And Chris, I'm not sure that he's played major tournaments yet. Right. You know, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure he's he's tried it, but I don't even know whether he's won a match in a major tournament. Right. Larry just got, what, six at the U.S. Open last week out of 200. How many people played in that tournament? Uh, 250. Uh, six out of 250. That's, that's pretty strong. Larry won... I think he just fell apart at the end, but he was playing amazing pool, from what I understand. Yeah. A little bit of stress going on in Larry's life right now. Mm -hmm. I understand his wife is not quite doing so well. Yeah, that's Erica. She's a sweet lady. She's yeah, very sweet. Sending her some prayers there for sure, everybody. Her, her, we had the pleasure of hanging out with her aunts. I think her mother and her aunt. Mm -hmm. Nice people. Ooh, he's going to hit this ball. Yep. And that's that's the stuff that, that will freak you out when you're playing Larry. You go, well, it makes sense just to stop this ball. Right. And Larry goes, eh, I'm going to draw it six feet and be perfect, too. Yeah. Why he, not? Mm -hmm. He likes letting that stroke go. and But it gets you in trouble, too. Look where he's at. Sure. Pain and suffering. He's in real trouble. He's about to go down. <laughs> or up 11 to 2. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, he made an Earl cue. Look at this. Uh, he's got a little extension. I believe wow. that he's... Is he shooting with a low max cue? Yeah, I think he is. And we appreciate everybody uh, supporting InsidePool.tv, InsidePoolMag.com for all your news and video. Check out the online subscription of Inside Pool Magazine. I believe it's $9.99 for the year. Is that right, JR? That is correct. Correct. You see the speed that the flat five ball flew in at? <laughs> Amazing. I guess Larry's raffling off his cue, and Shannon's raffling off one of his own cues as well. I believe his jump cue or his break cue. I believe that uh, Marge's aunt uh, has cancer. I'm not quite sure about the condition of Erica, what, uh, what illness she is uh, experiencing right now. But I know that, it's, uh, that both players have put up some personal items, personal cues. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a raffle here to help support yeah, I mean, both those causes. Geez, how, do, how, how often do you see that? Two pro players raffling off their own cues. for ah. That's amazing. So somebody's going to get uh, Larry's cue. 
I believe it's the cue that he's playing with right now. Really? Yeah. Let me find out about that. And Larry looks like he's going to grab a hill. And he's warming up pretty well. He wants his set to be over. He wants to be kicking his feet up. Getting ready for his next round. And at this type point here, you know, professionally, you're not supposed to predict the next match. But when you get a, a lead like this, you, you can't help but to say, boy, I'm, I should be able to pick up one more game here fairly quick and, you know, clock out for the day. Larry. Larry is not uh, raffling off as Steve Lomax cue. He's, he's uh, raffling off another cue that he uses. Gotcha. I heard break cues and jump cues and things like that, but I wasn't really sure myself, but still. It's actually one of his classes. Three ball. He stood straight up, parked his rock after going to the rail, but at the same time, he does have a playable lie here, and here's a phenomenon that happens when you're trying to play yardstick. You'll start to play good when the guy gets on the hill. All right. Let's see if Chris has relaxed and accepted his fate and starts to play a much better game. I would love to see that. Once he gets going, this kid can shoot. Well, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. I've seen it a lot of times. The other player gets on the hill, and then the lesser player gets a shot, and he runs right out because he's already accepted his fate. And had he just played this way at the beginning of the match. Right. But a little long here, but as long as he settles down, boy, he's, he stood up on that shot a little bit. He's going to have to examine his stroke on these uh, tapes. Watch his head lift yep. during the delivery. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. He might as well have his head there. It uh, usually just, it, it, when you're making balls, it, it usually just starts to get you out of shape shot after shot, and then pretty soon you're hooked. But here he, he should be okay. The better players like Chris can even play like that and still make all the shots. Sure. When they're having a position or a fundamental errors. All right, Chris gets the three. Now, normally, we'd be playing, uh, for instance, a winter break type of format. We wouldn't be able to see something like this, you know, be able to happen uh, where Larry comes in. But I've actually seen these lesser players that try and use another player to see how good they are. I, the, I've seen it where they come in and run a three or a four here. Wants to clock out. He has a pretty good out here as long as he strokes his ball across the table one yep. rail. Oh, jumped right up. I don't think he jumped up. I think he just missed. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I thought he was going to just stroke it out one rail. He wanted to run three. And sometimes that lets your... It's a harder shot. Let's just face it. Let's call it what it is. It's a harder shot. You can just miss.
I think that was poorly conceived as an idea. And he makes a twofer. Finishes it out. And that's all she wrote. Folks, we want to thank you for tuning in. We're going to have Shannon Dalton versus Younger Chapman coming back at you here in a few minutes. But for myself and Alvin Nelson, we want to thank our sponsors, of course, Kamui Tips for that great subscription special and the Kamui Tip voucher giveaway. Millican Super Pro Cloth, Fury Custom Cues, and QSite.com for all your billiard needs. Try QSite.com. Stay folks, or stay tuned, folks. We'll have another match coming your way in just a few.